So I'm starting a project that I've been wanting to undertake for a while now, which is building a UV exposure box for platinum, palladium, and cyanotype printing. And I've been collecting parts for a couple of years actually, which is kind of uh, sad to admit. Um, as I've found different parts and pieces and deals, I've slowly been adding to my collection, preparing to build this, and also just working on my portfolio of pictures and things that I feel like would be good to print with those processes eventually. When you look at other UV exposure boxes that you, you can buy commercially, they're pretty expensive. They, I would say, start like $800 plus. They look great, but I also don't really feel like I need something that fancy. And I also feel like I could do it, a lot of it, on my own. And so the first thing that you'll notice that I got is uh, just a utility box for like an electrical utility box. It's made out of metal. It's quite heavy, very robust. I think I got this on eBay for like 60 bucks. At, with free shipping, which was I think was a, was a steal. So that's one thing that I would recommend doing is if, if you could find a pre-made box, whether it's, whether it's plastic or metal, a utility box is great. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I just felt like this would be the perfect platform for me to start with. Uh, it might need some modification here and there. So I'm gonna start with the mechanical side first because that's just what makes the most sense to me. You, you can see that I've got a lot of tools here. I'm a bike mechanic and so I work quite a bit on mountain bikes and gravel bikes and, and other things that I really enjoy doing. And so I feel like the mechanical side is gonna be the easy part for me. I wanna knock that out first. And then I'm gonna move on to the elect electronics. And I will say I'm not an electrician and working with electronics is, is not my forte. I know enough that I can I uh, wire this together, um, but definitely consult or work with some experts to get the advice that you need to do it. But I'll show you the steps that I'm going to take to build this. So you can see a collection of some of the parts that I have here. So that includes some of these gas struts to hold the lid of the UV exposure box open, a power supply, terminal blocks, the LED lights themselves. So there's quite a collection of parts and pieces here, but I'll go through every single one of these together as we start building it and show you what you might need and what you could possibly use to build your own UV exposure light box. Let's get to work. So the first thing to figure out is how to mount this. And you can see that this utility box already had some bolts that are mounted into the, into the frame here. I was kind of hoping that these would just be able to drop in. It's got just a little bit of a, of a flange that makes it not quite want to fit. So I feel like I almost need to open these up a little bit. See if I can get another, get another part of this mounted up top as well and then that will allow the box to open and close. thing that I'm going to do that's uh, a little bit more mechanical is install some of these cooling fans. I'm not really sure how hot this will get when all the lights are on, but there is going to be a pretty large power supply and I know that's going to be putting out some heat. And so I'm going to put, put one of these fans here and then the other one in this cutout that's already back here in the back to hopefully get some ventilation going through. And then all these holes that are here on this side of the box are gonna be sealed up with some other stuff. That way there's not so much UV light coming out of the box itself. You know, I'm kind of making this up as I go along here, so I'm not totally sure where everything is gonna be, but I'll get a much better idea of where all the different components will be as I start putting in some of these parts in there. The next part of the build that I'm going to tackle is mounting the power supply. I'm not going to worry about wiring anything yet, but I am going to start figuring out where everything is going to fit in here. You will need to calculate what size power supply you need based off of how many lights you have. This is a 400 watt power supply, and I calculated that based off of the amount of watts each LED needs and then looking at how many strips and how many total LEDs I'm gonna have there to, to calculate how many watts I needed to have as a power supply to power everything. Got the power supply mounted in now and the, on the back. 
and I'm gonna start figuring out how I'm gonna wire everything together. The first thing that you have to keep in mind when you're doing a UV exposure box like this with LED light strips is that the lights need to be wired in parallel. They can't be wired in series or it just decreases the output and the power of all the lights combined. When you do it in parallel, you get the maximum output that you're looking for, you get the brightness that you're looking for, that way you can get good exposures. So in order to do that, I have these terminal strips that allow me to do that parallel wiring. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start setting these up. And essentially, what we're gonna do in order to run everything in parallel is we're gonna slip one of these onto each of these terminal blocks so that we can get everything set up correctly. You can see that I'm using some really nice insulated screwdrivers. I recommend anytime that you are working with electronics, you can get yourself a nice pair of insulated ones. These are from WIA and I used these. Uh, back in the day, I used to work a lot on irrigation machines, so center pivot irrigation. Uh, my my full-time career is in agriculture, and so these were with me all the time, anytime I was working on machines, just to make sure that I was safe. So we got that in there. We can get those tightened back down, and then I just have to repeat this for each of these terminal blocks, and then I can start figuring out where I'm gonna mount them and how I'm gonna get the, everything wired together. Okay, so I've got all of these terminal blocks set up. So I have got both some positive and some negative ones. This should be enough for all of the LEDs that can be running across the length of the exposure box. Thing I'm not sure is what I got for this plug. I'm not sure which wires correspond to which one. So I need to get that figured out here before I can totally dive in and get that attached. So I had to look up some of the standards and I think I've got it figured out here that this yellow green one is the ground. Um, this blue one should be the neutral and this brown one should be the load. So I think, I think I've got those figured out. Hopefully I'll get that wired and not cause any kind of damage. This is the first time that I've uh, done any wiring with LEDs and so I'm, I'm a little nervous. I was reading some reviews about these lights and the reviews I said said that the positive and negative on the strips are actually switched. So I don't really know what to believe. I'm not sure if I should go by what's on here or go by what other people have said. I think I'm gonna try the way that it says is to connect it here. I'm hoping it won't do any type of damage. And then if there's any type of issue, then, then maybe I'll switch. I've got three rolls of this 365 nanometer UV light strips. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and run this one across and just see what that looks like. So I do have these marked off and that's almost Perfect. And we're gonna take this one and we're gonna wire it into the terminal block here. This will at least allow us to test whether this works the way that we think that it should. And if it does, then I'll continue wiring everything else in. And if it doesn't, then I guess we'll have to troubleshoot and see what happens. Then we're gonna run it up here on this side. And then what this will allow us to do is distribute that power along each terminal on this power block. So I've got that kind of set up. And this is the moment of truth. And so I've got a couple things. I'm not gonna touch the box with the enclosure right now. I just wanna make sure it's totally safe. I mean, all these parts are things I got on Amazon. I'm gonna plug in the power supply. Hopefully we'll see that light up. And then I might just tap the enclosure just with the back of my hand, just to make sure that everything is safe. You never wanna grab anything with your hands like this to test. Um, if it is electrified, 
that'll make your muscles tense and you'll grab onto it and grip onto it. So one tip, if you're gonna be doing something you've never done, always backhand it, because then you can't grab onto something. It just keeps you a little bit safer. Okay, this power supply is on. I'm not seeing anything from the LEDs. Um, we do have the power supply moving, the fans going, um, touching the enclosure, everything seems safe. We just need to figure out exactly what we're doing wrong to get these to light up. So I got the issue figured out and you know, the I guess the Amazon reviews were correct. So when you look closely at the at the power or at the LED strip itself has a has a plus and a minus for positive and negative, but it looks like these strips are are labeled incorrectly. So I switched the wires around on the power supply. I'm actually bringing over the negative into this terminal block, which is feeding into here on the positive side, and that's what allowed it to to power up. So you can see that when I plug it in, um, yeah, we get some we get some UV light going on now. So um, that's great. Uh, unfortunately, it just means that they are mislabeled. I thought I would maybe take a minute and just explain exactly how I'm doing this. So once I measure the, the length of the LED strip that I need, um, each LED strip has specific places where you can cut. And there's a symbol of scissors, a line, and then two little copper pieces here. And that's where I can cut. So I'm gonna take my diagonal cutters. I've measured the length that I need. I'm gonna cut right along that line. One of the interesting things is that these leads can only go on a certain way. There's actually kind of like a cutout on the inside, so the LED uh, lights themselves can kind of slip in. And so once I get that figured out, I just make sure that those two little spikes on the inside are, are lined up, and then I can take this little piece on the back and push down, clamps everything together, and holds the light strip in place. And then I can do, do the other side as well. And, and get a get one of those leads put on to this side. So once I have the leads on, on both sides of the strip, there's one other thing that I need to do in order to parallel wire it. These leads come set up to wire in series, but I need to wire in parallel. And so that means that I, don't, I only need one wire on each side. And so I'm gonna pull these back. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip off one wire on this side. So I'm leaving my negative wire here and then I'm going to the other side of the strip and instead I'm going to cut off this other one. And so now I've got these two set up so that I have one wire coming in on the positive side and then another wire coming out on the negative side. This will allow me to wire it in parallel into those terminal blocks that I've already set up so that the power goes through these the correct way. And then I can stick everything onto the light box. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. Everything lights up. Great. And I just have to repeat that going all the way down the board, you know, quite a number of times just to make sure I get the coverage that I'm looking for. I am just about done with the UV exposure box. It's looking really great. I'm really impressed with how it's turned out. And so I will flash the total price of the build here on screen after I get everything totaled up. I will also include a build list of everything that I purchased to build this box along with prices so that if you're interested in building a UV exposure box that's really similar yourself and uh, save some money, you can also do that. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be to get, to get everything built. The one little issue that I'm running into as I'm finishing up here is that the sticky backing on the LED strips isn't really super sticky and so some of the strips are starting to kind of peel off of the lid. I'm going to use a hot glue gun and so that's what I'm going to do here as I'm finishing up just to make sure that I've got everything totally secure and then also secure the leads and connectors at the end of each LED strip just to make sure that nothing's going to droop or fall off eventually. So the UV exposure box is done and I'm super happy with how it turned out. Figured I would give you a quick overview or tour of the box now that it's complete and hopefully very soon I'll be able to start using it to print some cyanotypes and also some platinum palladium prints as well. So we'll start off with the first on the outside. It is a metal electrical utility box, so super tough. It's pretty heavy. It does have a latch on the, on the outside, that's nice. I put some fans on the box to help ventilate some of the air and keep some of the hot air out. And on the top, I put a handle. So it's a door handle for like one of those pull doors. Uh, really tough and uh, that'll be what I use there 
and then I just have a plug. And the way that I'm gonna use this to time my exposures is gonna to be to get a darkroom timer. So one of the Gray Lab timers, I'll probably just buy one on eBay. That way I'll plug it in and then I can punch in the time that I wanna use for exposure and it'll automatically turn the power on and off. That'll be a really easy way to do that. And then on the inside of the box, of course, I've got all of the LED light strips. They're stuck on with the sticky side of the LED lights, but then I also put on some hot glue just to make sure that they're totally on there. Everything is wired into these terminal blocks so that everything can be parallel wired just to make sure that we have consistent power output from the lights to get really good exposures on the prints. And then of course I do have a, a power supply and then those fans to ventilate and have a really big area in the bottom here. So I could probably put, fit some pretty large contact print frames in here. I do have a high pressure spring. It doesn't, it doesn't quite work to hold the lid open, but it does prevent it from falling down too quickly so that I don't like break my fingers or something. But all in all, super happy with how this exposure box turned out. Hopefully very soon I'll be able to start printing with this exposure box. So make sure that you like the video if you found it useful or interesting, and also subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified as soon as I start making some prints with this. Um, that way you can see the results for yourself. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.